All right, everybody, welcome to another Ignite Visibility University podcast and also video. We're really excited today to have Keith here with us. Uh, if you don't know about Keith, Keith is our Director of Conversion Rate Optimization at Ignite Visibility, and he's been doing this for quite a while. Works on a ton of big accounts and medium-sized accounts, and, and I'm just really excited to have him here today. Keith, thanks so much for being on. It's my pleasure, John. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us just a little bit about you and your role. Just like, what, what do you kind of work on at Ignite and what, what, what's your background? Okay, uh, terrific. So I'll start with my background. Um, I started in online marketing very early on, back in uh, early 2000. I started to uh, develop small business websites and that was sort of my forte. Um, you know, the websites were very simple back then. It was HTML, CSS. It's nothing like what it is um, today. So I was doing that. And then I guess it was around 2003, 2004, Google came out with AdWords. And um, I really liked AdWords because I could make a difference. So, you know, when you build a website, you kind of just leave it there. But with AdWords, now you're talking about uh, driving qualified traffic and really kind of making things happen for a business. And so I started uh, doing that for a few years and then, God, I, I don't think it was too much later, but then they developed that great little tool in AdWords that you know about called um, the Google Website Optimizer where you could start split testing. And I was like, oh my God, this is like really where it is. Because I think being a paid analyst, my favorite thing was seeing which ads would perform better. But you know, you can get the qualified traffic there at the right price. But if that landing page isn't doing its job, you know, you really have an uphill battle there. And so I, um, I just absolutely lights me up to be able to develop test variations and compare them uh, against the control and see how people react. It's, it's continually fascinating to me how we can change an image, how we can change a call to action um, and, and see how people react to that. It's, uh, I think I have the best job at the company. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, and I, I'm, I'm equally as passionate about a conversion rate optimization, or almost as equally, but uh, I, I, love, I love how much energy you, you bring to it, and, uh, you know, I, I just, it seems like so many people ignore that side, you know, I can't tell you how many businesses might have just been using the same landing page for, you know, the last couple of years, or maybe they never even made a landing page, or maybe they never even did a test. Yeah, it's so, it is so surprising to me. And I don't quite know what it is because, uh, you know, it, like I said, it lights me up. It lights you up. It's just there's so much room for uh, improvement and opportunity there. I, I wonder if almost it's not like, for, and I don't understand this, but CRO isn't quite as sexy as, say, like social media is or paid media is. Yeah. And I also think that there's a little bit of um, hesitancy on companies to do CRO, at least at the, on marketing levels, just because, hey, we just spent the last uh, month developing this landing page. We all put our great thoughts into it. And now here somebody else is going to come in outside of our bubble. Yeah. And, uh, you know, make us look a little bit silly, which, you know, we don't do that. You know, CRO is all about learning and if we had their same set of um, facts in our heads, we would have probably made the same page they did. And we're coming in and looking at it as like, okay, well, this needs to be better. How can we make it better? And um, it's a little bit easier for us in that aspect than I think it is for internal teams. So I, I wonder if there isn't a little bit hesitancy um, about that. I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I think people are very protective of their websites, but you know, one of the things that we've done is we've developed this really cool conversion rate optimization framework. So we know exactly on mobile and desktop pages, exactly how, you know, to do CRO, the seven second test. I want to get into all that stuff. I want to geek out on CRO with you a little bit today. So let, we'll talk about that. But before we do, I'd like to hear from you because you touched on something. So what type of program should people be doing for CRO? Say, say you were CMO or at, at a, at a medium-sized or large company? Like, what does that program look like? What should they actually be doing? How many tests should they be running on a monthly basis? Like, what's the perfect program look like in your mind, do you think? You know, I, that's a great question. And I think that the perfect program looks like um, ABT, always be testing. You know, always be refining. Um, and the reason that is, is because people change over time. Your competitors change their pages over time. Um, 
you know, if there was like a static playbook for a CRO, uh, I wouldn't have a job. Everyone's website would be converting at 100%. But people are such mercur mercurial uh, human beings and so complex that um, it's forever changing. So a perfect program, you're always testing and you're not just testing on the landing page level. Of course, you know, your paid media team is testing at the, at the ad level. Um, and qualifying traffic that way. But you know, you also want to be testing like, okay, what are we doing for, for top of the market people? You know, people in that early information gathering stage. You know, how are we serving those, those folks? Are, are we educating them? Are we providing some value even though they're not going to convert, you know, down the road? And you know, you see a lot of great things happening, especially with our email department, the way they, they develop white papers and downloads and fact sheets that really allows a company to do follow-up marketing um, at a very cost-effective way and extend that relationship with the website visitor. Yeah, I like that. It's really good points. I mean, from my perspective, I, I, I think, you know, you touched on some great stuff. One of the things I'd add, I mean, I feel like everybody should at least be running one test a month on their top landing pages. You know, if it's a landing page that you have run millions of dollars to over a year or even tens of thousands of dollars over a year, if you're able to run a test every month and split the traffic 50%, at least just one test, then you're able to consistently improve. I mean, at the end of 12 months, 12 tests, you're going to be able to get that conversion rate up, you know, at, you know, 20% or more minimum, don't you think? Oh, I definitely believe that. And yeah. um, the great thing about CRO too is like, say like your example of, of testing the landing page, right? Uh, you can come away with a win and take those learnings and then apply them, you know, to cross channel, to organic, to paid media, um, even to direct, or if you're doing media buys and things like that, you know, develop that messaging, um, you know, on site using a small amount of paid media traffic and then, you know, take those learnings uh, about what the value propositions, images, whatever. And then now when you're getting ready to do your big TV media buy, you know how you want that commercial to look. You've got data behind every single decision. You know, you're not just throwing spaghetti at a wall. Um, so the gains from CRO are just, uh, you know, so transferable across organizations. That's really interesting, Keith. I have not really heard that before. I haven't really heard somebody say, use CRO messaging and what's working in the messaging there to dictate the rest of your 360 marketing strategy. That's really smart. I like that. Yeah, it's so, uh, it's so powerful and such a great utility. Um, but, you know, circling back to what you said earlier, I, a lot of companies don't really tap it to its potential. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk landing pages for a minute. So, so you know, we kind of talked about the perfect program. You know, it's at least some level of tests every single month. You know, and, and we have, you know, a, a lot of our program here, you know, deals with, um, you know, specific landing pages, mobile, desktop, testing, a framework for that checkout process, optimization, and refining your checkout process, refining your forms. Uh, we've got our cross-channel conversion action plan where we look at, you know, all the different ways that traffic is hitting your website, how it's hitting the website, how it's converting, um, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. But let's start landing pages. And then what I want to do is talk about, like, just some fun CRO tricks. But, like, when you look at a landing page, what goes through your mind? The first thing I look at is that above the fold section, you know, uh, to, to borrow your term, that's where you want to do your elevator pitch. And it is so true because people by nature, um, they want to, they're not, I don't know, lazy is the right word, but if they don't see exactly what they're looking for, it's so easy for them to click back to Google and, you know, start at another site that might, that might, you know, they can click on that and within six seconds or seven seconds find what they're looking for. So, and, you know, you've seen those studies as well as I have about uh, people's attention spans these days have, you know, decreased so much that I think we're like, even with goldfish or even, maybe even a little bit less. So <laughs> really, you've really got, got to get those website visitors uh, right off the bat with the above the fold section. Above the fold, I love it. Great point. Yeah, above the fold on mobile and desktop. There's so many different ways to do it. You know, one of the ways that we've kind of landed on doing it is, you know, seven second test. Who are you? What's your main key differentiator? Um, you know, what's your main kind of value proposition? Maybe a couple bullet points and a call to action. You know, that seems to convert really, really well. And then testing the imagery, testing, um, you know, the, the call to action on a consistent basis is really important. Um, talk to me about images a little bit. Like, how do you pick the right image for above the fold? And, and should every page have an image? What goes through your head on, on that side? Because 
I've seen one image can change a conversion rate 10%. That's such a good point. Yeah, images are hugely important. Um, to unpack a little bit about what you said, you know, should every page have an image? And I would say, you know, yes, they, you know, every page should at least have one image, but I would provide a caveat being that that image should be directly tied to the content on that page versus using um, a stock photo. I, I think stock photos are such a distraction. And, you know, if, if people are looking at images and they're not getting anything from them, it's just a distraction and that's going to take away their attention that's on the copy around those images. Um, you know, and you can do some, some great stuff uh, with images. Of course, you want them to be really, you know, really crystal clear, especially if it's a product image. If it's a SaaS company and you're talking about the reporting capabilities, rather than use a blown up image, you know, on a computer screen, why not just take a few small elements of that program and use those? And uh, once you do that, you know, people can see, okay, this is going, how I'm going to send my welcome emails, or this is how I'm going to send my alerts out. Um, and they start thinking about actually how they would use the product and it's a great way to build uh, engagement and you know something else that's interesting is and I don't see most companies taking advantage of this is image captions are some of the most widely read text on a web page. The eyes are, are naturally drawn to the image. They have one sentence or two sentences underneath. Those captions are going to be read almost every single time. And that's a real, a lot of people, times when they do use captions, they're, they're kind of treated as an afterthought versus, you know, using that to, you know, put a persuasion point in or, or a call to action. I love that stuff. That's great insight. Um, I think the listeners are really going to like that. You know, one of the things I'm thinking about, gosh, you know, you're talking about images, the perfect image, you know, obviously you want that to align with your demographic and what they're looking for and, you know, and all that. But, you know, when somebody lands on a landing page, taking that image, using that in all your remarketing ads, you know, using that, and I really like that point you made earlier about 360, that's sticking with me. Let's, let's shift gears a little bit. So we talked a little bit about landing pages and you can feel free to elaborate more on that if you want, but like, when, what are some of your favorite CRO tips and like tricks? Like when, when you like, like what are some of the things that have been like really cool that have worked for you over the years? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So I think probably the most consistent thing, and this, this seems obvious, but I feel like, um, you know, maybe people don't give it enough of their attention is uh, to really understand visitor intent, like, and not only understand it, but walk in their shoes. Like, Hey, you know, I need, I need to do something with my data management. Um, you know, I'm already overwhelmed. My boss is on me. These reports aren't working. I'm kind of stressed out. And, um, you know, speaking directly to those, that kind of intent. And, you know, I think our SEO team does a really good job of it. Um, I think it was, is it with the E uh, acronym that you, we, that we use? Expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so that really, that really kind of ties in, but, you know, walking in that visitor's shoes. So if, uh, say for example, you're a motivational speaker, um, you know, rather than give me these kind of lofty and aspirational goals, you know, teach me something on that page. Teach me something that's going to serve me well. And, you know, um, a good, a good uh, motivational speaker, like some of the ones we, uh, like some of the ones we work with are, are just, are just terrific at it. But, you know, if you can teach somebody something on a page, if you can educate somebody on something, um, you're going to really do a long way in building engagement. Well, I think that's a really good point. And one of the things I've been really impressed with, and I think that, that a lot of people will like this is you've started actually surveying customers, right? Yes, I, you know, uh, your customers are wonderful uh, resources for you to use. Now, here's a caveat with that, though, is they can, you have to um, qualify, your, uh, interview your most recent customers, right? Because after 30 days, they're not going to kind of remember, um, God, you, uh, that's your kids. That's so awesome, John. Uh, I, I, man, it makes me... Watching on video right now, then my kid just walked in. <laughs> he loves to interrupt things. Uh, I'm working from home today, but... Yeah. I, 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 it, just uh, not to digress, but my kids are a little bit older now, and God, I would kill to go back to those years. They're so fun. But it, um, so much fun, um, and I love them to death. Um, but anyway, so let's talk a little bit about the, the surveying customers. So one of the things that you've been doing, and I, I thought that this was really innovative, is actually getting on the phone with 10 customers of our clients and asking about their pain points, asking about why they chose the product, like really getting real data 
And then using that, because I feel like sometimes people are just way too close to their business, you know? And for me, it's like a lot of the stuff I talk about is, oh, we, you know, we are um, ROI focused, you know, you give us our goals, we can hit them, uh, you know, through all the different tools out there for advertising. Maybe that's not what our customers want to hear. How, how have those conversations been going and has that been helpful? Is that a strategy you would recommend to other people? Oh my goodness, it's super helpful, John. And um, not to digress, but we talked a little bit about um, some of the reporting that we do, like with the cross-channel reporting, the customer journey reporting and things like that. And it just layers on a whole new element of it. But the interviews are great. And some of the uh, questions that um, I would advise asking, you know, your customers is, you know, ask them things like, you know, what triggered the event to make you start this journey, right? Because no one just kind of wakes up in the morning and they hire um, an advertising agency or, a software solution, right? What what kind of triggered that? And you know, ask them about what were what were the specific pain points? You know, um, was the solution you're using too convoluted? It was too bloated. It, you know, it was too much of a learning curve, or was it not doing what you wanted it to do? Um, and you know, what specifically did you want it to do? Um, and then you know, what other? And his, this is kind of a tough question, I think, sometimes for companies to ask their own customers. Uh, yeah. But, you know, what others, what other companies were you considering? What mm -hmm. other sites did you look at? Um, and, you know, the big one is what made you choose us over the competition? Was there one or two things? And then another great question is what almost stopped you from uh, becoming a customer today? Yeah, I love that. I, I think about this example sometimes, like if somebody Googled, how long does SEO take? Who is that person? And why are they Googling it? Well, there's somebody who's just trying to figure out if they should invest in SEO or if they're working with another company and it's taking a really long time. So what's the intent? Well, you want to match your conversion goal to that. So if they Google it, they come in, they either get an ad or they get a landing page. They come to that landing page. What would be the perfect thing that that person could have? You want to kind of get your conversion focused around that. So maybe it is a download you know, study on how long SEO is taken by industry, right? That's a great way to get a nice little micro conversion instead of a macro conversion. Uh, so I just think that your point on really understanding the customer and getting deep with the customer matters so much. And people just throw up websites and they don't think about it. But if they really get into the details, they can uh, just make a huge impact on the business. So I want to shift gears a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about the cross-channel conversion action plan. Tell us a little bit about what that is, because that's something that's been really well received. Okay. It's a wonderful uh, report. It's very, very powerful. And it's, it's really best if you're getting a lot of traffic and a lot of conversions through different channels. Like, so for example, you know, a lot of your conversions are coming through, um, are coming through paid media. And then, you know, but you're also getting a lot from organic and then you're getting a lot from email and things like that. And what the report does, it, it kind of dives in and shows you exactly what's happening with those channels. And then it shows you which pages are resonating best, which, um, you know, which content they're, they're, they're finding the most engaging and what's converting. And what it, what it can do is like what you're learning from paid media, like we talked earlier about CRO and forming other channels, is we can use this report and say, hey, this is what we should be doing with email. Um, you know, maybe we'll dial back a little bit on social and let's, let's really pump out email because this is what the data is showing. It gives us clear direction by channels, um, by demographics. Um, and not only that, uh, a big thing, and I think it's a bit of a forgotten report, is by what's going on by browser. And an example of that is we did a report for a client very recently and, you know, we're looking at, at conversions by browsers and we see that Apple has 90 some percent. And, and we all know that Apple, you know, they, their phone is the king of the internet, like them, love them, whatever. But they generally will, will get a lot of a big share of conversions, but that's a very rare to see 90 some percent on, on one device. And then we dug into it a little bit further and saw, oh my goodness, uh, you're getting almost no conversions from Samsung phones. The only Samsung phone that's converting is the Samsung 10. Everything, uh, all the other uh, models in that series are not converting. And yeah. so by this report, the client was able to see that, turn it over to his dev team. And as far as I know that they're, they're working on resolving those Samsung issues. Uh, you know what? That's so crazy. I have to tell you, I did that same report for another client, um, a huge client a couple years ago, cross channel conversion action report. I looked at all the traffic hitting the website and then I looked at it by device and then I went down and I looked at the Samsung and um, this was a whole different project. And 
And what we found is that there were no conversions at all for Samsung. So I was, I was wondering why are there no conversions for Samsung? Dug a little bit deeper, went to the main landing page, right? Needle in a haystack. You would have never seen it if you didn't run this report. Needle in the haystack. Go look at the page. The button is broken. It does not oh, work no. on the Samsung phone. And this was the first two or three weeks the client been working with us. We, we run the report. We find out that button's broken. We fix it. They immediately start making an extra 50000 a month just by fixing that button. It worked on every other device. They had no idea it had been broken for, um, for like a year if, you know, paid for the services right away. So I, that's why I love that. I just feel like people, they never take the time to fully audit every, all the tech on their website and see how all the traffic hits, how it hits the landing pages. And the other thing I love about that report is because if you, when it shows you the top landing pages by traffic source, so say it's all the top landing pages by Facebook, there might be one with a 5% conversion rate and then one with a 0.2, right? And you go and look at the one with the point two, and you're like, okay, well, that one doesn't have the button above the fold, right? <laughs> or it doesn't work on Samsung or iPhone, but the other one does. So, you know, I, it's a really great report, and I think you've, you've done a good job with it. So, Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, there are, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's like almost like doing a puzzle, figuring out uh, what's okay. going on. All right, let's do a couple of rapid fire CRO things. Uh, so timers, do you like countdown timers for urgency? Is that a strategy you like or don't like? Uh, I like them. I think that they have their place, but they should always be tested. Okay. I like that. So urgency is good, but you know, sometimes it can be a little spammy. Let's try another one. Pop-ups. Do you like pop-ups or not like pop-ups? Personally, I do not like pop-ups, but professionally, I love them. Okay. I mean, they, they exit intent you are a pretty much a must have. So do um, you see better conversions when you like, how do you, how do you like to use pop-ups? Because I agree with you personally. I don't really like them either, um, and I don't think many people do. But every time that we implement them, we see an increase in conversions. So, like, how do you how do you like to use pop ups? Um, well, you know, I think you really want to think about the content that you're placing on that pop up and how it can be valued, not just um, yeah. you know sort of an off the cuff you know attempt to get an email address. You know, have something of value you know for that visitor to download or promise them something uh, that will really help them out if they click that link and, and view other content. Um, you know, exit intent overlays, they're getting ready to leave anyway, why not uh, give them a quick little, little offer and, and see if you can get an email address and, and extend that relationship. It's, you know, it's no loss to anyone and, you know, exit intent overlays, particularly, I don't think anyone's bothered by them anymore. Really well said. What is an exit intent oh, ex exit intent pop-up? Tell everybody what that is because we've seen some great results with that. Sure. Uh, what those are, are it's a pop-up that's triggered when someone goes to close out the browser. And the only way that they're going to see that is if they actually go to leave your website, right? And that's going to trigger a pop-up. And that's a great chance to offer them, you know, an extra 10% off or, hey, we know you're leaving, but why not download this white paper that'll help you in your journey for whatever it is that you're searching for? Um, you know, just get, whatever it is, make sure it's a value and uh, you're going to find a lot more customers that would have slipped through the, the mesh in the net, so to speak. If you're watching on video, my kids just busted in for the second time. <laughs> exit intent pod, uh, exit intent pop-ups are fantastic. And one of the times that we did it, we saw a 14% increase in conversion rates uh, for the client, which is pretty cool. That is really cool. And it, like, I get excited anytime, you know, you're in double digits uh, on conversion rate, you're doing, you're doing really well. All right. Well, Couple other things. So give everybody just your general framework for conversion rate optimization and what you'd recommend that they do in 2020. Like where should they be taking the program moving forward? Yeah, so uh, I think really what you wanna be focused on is your landing page experience. And by that, I mean imagery. Make sure every image counts, make sure every image is persuading. Content, this is, old, this is an oldie, oldie, but a goodie. It's never going away, you know, don't use broad language, get real specific about pain points. Um, a lot of companies, they're, they're afraid they're gonna alienate some of their visitors um, by getting too specific. Uh, but the problem with that is, um, you know, it's that old axiom, right? When you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. You know, take a chance, do some A-B testing, get real specific on, uh, on you know, on pain points. Um, you know, provide value. 
you know, and really look at what you're doing with top of the market, uh, you know, your top, your top of the funnel marketing, you know, have a, a quality white paper, a quality download. And it doesn't have to be anything, you know, super crazy, like a 10 page PDF. It can be a one or two page fact sheet. Um, you know, what to look for, what not to look for, something that will serve them in their, in their journey. Um, anytime you can make an impression or educate someone, you know, you're, you're really built, you're going a long way to getting them closer to the bottom of your funnel there. I love, um, I, I love the idea that you, you, you have a micro conversion specific strategy. So like a study by landing page. So if I make a study on SEO and intent in 2020, and I have a pop-up that fires on all of our top SEO pages, people are going to want to download that and then get into our system. Um, and, uh, and I think, you know, thinking of the micro macro conversion strategy and thinking about it from uh, the segmented website perspective is, is really, really powerful. So. It is. It's, um, God, this has been such a great uh, interview, John. Thank you um, like so much. Yeah, Keith, thanks so much for being on today. Um, everybody, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in, in the comments. If you're watching this on Facebook or if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll be happy to answer them. We'll be doing more uh, conversion rate optimization uh, you know, videos in the future. And also, if you'd like to check out our YouTube channel, we've got this really great four-step framework on conversion rate optimization. And um, other than that, uh, Keith, I have one more question for you. Sure. What, are you, uh, what are you most excited about uh, in your life right now? Anything big coming up right now that, that you're excited about? Um, this is probably not going to sound genuine, but honestly, I, I, I have a really good life. I have a great wife. I have great kids. Everything's uh, great, but I'm, just, I'm honestly just very enthusiastic and excited about being part of the Ignite team. Um, my coworkers are so awesome. You know, the paid media team, the SEO team, the email team. Uh, the PR team. Uh, I, I love that any day when we're back in the office, I can have a five minute conversation with somebody and learn something I had uh, no clue about. And uh, they're so kind and generous, I, both with the clients and with the coworkers about teaching, learning, helping. Um, I think honestly, that's really what I'm most excited about. Awesome. Thanks so much, Keith. Thanks for saying that. And uh, if anybody needs any conversion rate optimization tips, Keith is your guy. Uh, split testing, mobile landing pages, desktop pages, uh, checkout processes, uh, pop-ups, um, creating special offers, copywriting, all of these things together. He's really good at it. And, um, you know, one, one actually, one more thing I want to talk about is, you know, what's your favorite tool for CRO? How are you doing most of your tests right now? I think some people might find that interesting. Okay, sure. So there's a, a lot of great tools for CRO. To pick one is really, really tough. Um, uh, platform wise, I really like Optimizely. I like Visual Website Optimizer. I like Google, Google Optimize. Uh, for learning though, you know, I really like Hotjar just for the simple fact that, you know, you get a lot of great data from the heat maps, the click maps, the scroll maps. Um, I love to be able to uh, launch pop-ups to ask people very just general open-ended questions. And, you know, like the favorite, my favorite one is, are you finding the information that you're looking for today? And then if they answer no, you hit them with a follow-up, like, okay, well, what were you looking for today? And, um, you know, over time, those, you're going to develop a, a really good direction on which way that the copy or imagery on your website really needs to go. And Hotjar is such an affordable tool. If you haven't used it, I would really uh, take a good look at, at, at that because there's a, there's a lot of capabilities there. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for dropping all the knowledge with us today, Keith. It was great to have you on the Ignite Disability University podcast. And thanks again. We'll see you at the office and uh, talk to you soon. All this right? was great, John. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.